Hi, welcome back to the Reload Bench. So this is a reshoot of the intro for the really long video you're about to watch. There really wasn't a way for me to reduce the length of the video and, in my opinion, give a good demonstration of the product and it, what I was doing. During the video, I explain a little bit about the product and I explain a little bit about why I'm doing what I'm doing. But I'm going to cover a little bit of that right now in the intro, which unfortunately is probably going to be a little bit too long as well. More or less, uh, I had some older diesel that I got some dirt in and I needed to strain it so that I can put it back in the fuel tank of either one of my trucks in order to use it. So what ended up happening is I needed to drop the tank out of my 16 year old truck in order to fix damage to the wiring harness that was done to it years ago at a car dealership. And it was giving me a lot of, of starting and running issues and it, it was a problem. So unfortunately, because of winter weather and the fact that I don't have a, a, a garage to work on the vehicle in, I had to park the truck for a few months before I could get to it. Once the weather got warmer, I was able to drop the tank. And I knew there was gonna be some sediment in the diesel uh, in the tank because the tank's 16 years old. But I was kind of rushing the, the work and I was working alone, really flipping the tank and dumping out the diesel is a two person job and I, I didn't handle it that way. There was dirt on the top of the tank. I should have wiped it off first, I didn't. So the sediment from the tank ended up in, in three five gallon buckets that I had cleaned out to store the diesel in or, or to put it, put it in, pour it in. And in addition, dirt from the top of the tank ended up in those buckets. I put brand new lids on those buckets and I put the buckets away in my shed and I said, I'll get back to it later. At a later point, I looked for a strainer that would fit on top of a five gallon bucket because I had heard of this stuff before, but I'd never actually used it before. I'd heard of drop-in strainers and strainer bags and I, I kind of looked at both and I ended up picking a drop-in strainer off of Amazon. Now I tried to find the smallest micron I, I could find for it and that ended up being 25 micron. Now, it said the name of the company on the description for the product on Amazon, but I didn't even bother to go to the company's website to find out anything more. I actually didn't even do that before I shot the video. After the, I shot the video, I looked it up and come to find out that uh, the 25 micron filter that I got off Amazon, if I go to the manufacturer's website, I can get it as low as 10 microns and the price is about the same. So I will include information about the, the company that sells this product, their direct website, in the description section of this video. So let me get right to it. So this is a box that came in from Amazon, and this is from Duda Energy down in Decatur, Alabama. The box was really light, I'm like, what the heck? Now the picture I saw on Amazon made this thing look a little bit more, more I don't know, like it had more, more rigidity to it. This is very flexible plastic and this is a, a just a membrane right here. I mean this is this is all mesh and that's that's not kind of the way I, I thought it would look from from the picture on Amazon. And you can see it's a little bit dirty. That's because I'm, I'm shooting this intro in post. So I've already used it. In the video you're going to see some mistakes that I made. I made all this up as I went along. I've never used this before. I've never strained diesel before or gasoline anything like that. Uh, the diesel I put in the tank in January or February. I parked the truck in February. It's now August, so the diesel is about seven or eight months old. Rule of thumb is that you can store diesel for about a year, gasoline for about six months. So the diesel is still good. I just needed to get the dirt out of it, and this actually did the job, as you'll see in the video. Now, I did speed part of the video up to eight times normal speed. That's the first time I've done it in the video editor, and it was kind of fun to play with. The video is still really long, but I think any questions you might have about using something like this are gonna be answered by watching the video. So, uh, in the end, I've got three buckets with, or I'm sorry, I have three fuel cans with about, about four gallons, three, yeah, about four gallons of diesel in each. And I'm going to, and, and they've been strained. This thing actually did a great job and I'll add some fresh diesel to those cans and at some point when the fuel gets low in either truck, because I have two trucks with diesel engines, I'll go ahead and add this to the, or put it in the tank and then uh, add fresh pour, pump fresh diesel in on top of that. I've done things like that before as far as rotating out my diesel, because about every three months I rotate it out and I always add fresh diesel when I do it. I've never had an issue. So with this really long intro, here comes a really long video. Hopefully you find something useful in it. It's answering any questions that you might have about 
using something like this to strain diesel. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, so what I've got is a simple five gallon bucket here. This bucket used to have hydraulic oil in it, but I cut the top off of it and cleaned it out. So it was clean when I, I used it. Just bought a lid for it. And you can see the diesel in there. That's all dirt that fell off the top of the fuel tank. At the time, I was trying to manhandle the tank by myself. It was really a two man job. And I just wanted to get the fuel out of there and not have to pick up the tank over and over again. So that's what I get. So go ahead and set the strainer in there and just see how well this works. I've never tried this before. It looks like a lot of the dirt is staying in the bucket, so that's good. All right, that last little bit's got so much in there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to dispose of this by burning it in the grill. So let's see how well the strainer did as I spilled diesel everywhere. So it, you can see right there, it caught a lot of particles. And that looks fairly clean. Now for part two, this is gonna be a little bit trickier. Okay, for the next portion of this, once again, winging it, never tried this before. I simply took one of the terry cloths, like I said, you can find that in the, the painter's section in a big box store, and I took one of these larger rubber bands that you can find in the office supply, school supply section at a department store. The terry cloth, I believe I purchased that at Home Depot. Those are made in America. The rubber band I bought at Walmart. This is made in America. And I'm going to pour slowly and see if this will do additional straining. The funnel that I'm using is a really long funnel here. You can buy that in the automotive department of a big box store, a automotive supply store, or a department store. You should be able to find a longer funnel. I decided to go with a longer one as opposed to one with a wider mouth on it because I want that funnel down in there where it's not gonna tip over, fall out because I'm doing this by myself. If I had somebody holding the funnel, that might, might help me use a, a different style funnel. So I'm gonna pour really slow here. I'm not even sure if this terry cloth is really filtering anything. I'm more or less doing it as a, an extra added measure I mean, the fuel looks really clean after after going through that filter there. I got the filter on Amazon. I can't remember how many microns it is, but I'll go ahead and include the information about it in the description section of the video and a link to the Amazon page. They had different filters that you could place on top of a bucket, and I took the one with the, uh, the smallest microns I could find as far as the, the filter media there. Now, I will say this, it's thin and it, it's really flimsy looking, and uh, based off the picture, I thought it would be a little bit more rigid, but it seemed to do the job. We'll see how it does with two more buckets. All right, so I got a little impatient there a couple times and spilled some, but this is what I was really trying to find out, how much residue would be there at the bottom. So there was some stuff that got through the screen, very, very fine stuff, 
just going to go ahead and wipe this out with a terry cloth and we'll get, get on to the next one. You can see how much sediment from the tank and dirt from the top of the tank there is in the second bucket. I think there's even a dead bug in there. But I was able to get most of that. I went back with the first one and, and drained more out. I'm just going to wipe these out and then just burn the rags in the grill. That way I'm not dumping diesel in there. And you can see, except for the stuff that gets trapped around the lip here, that filter seems to be doing a pretty good job. This is the second bucket. And you might see a little bit of sediment at the bottom, but overall, that's pretty good, I think. While I strain into this second diesel can, I went onto the Amazon website and I checked. This is a 25 micron filter. It cost me $14. And right now it's showing currently unavailable. The 25 micron was the smallest size I could find. This rag does have some filtering properties because it's pouring in there fairly slow, but it's definitely uh, definitely not for really tiny tiny particles and it's nothing to uh, take this rag and the rag that I wipe everything out with and just put them in my charcoal grill there and just burn them burn them up to dispose of them noticed another thing too is simply holding the bucket at an angle the particles tend to float to the bottom so if you didn't have a five gallon bucket and a strainer for that bucket you might be able to skim off some of it if you had a similar situation where you were trying to reuse some old diesel or some contaminated diesel before uh, before it went bad there or just if you were trying to find a way to uh, use it up because disposing of this is, is not exactly the easiest thing to do. I'm not really too worried about it soaking into the deck because the properties of some sort of sealant or stain or you know some sort of wood treatment it's it's going to be uh, putting a lot of harsh petroleum based chemicals in there anyhow and i may end up uh, replacing some more planks on the deck next summer anyhow so i'm not really too worried about it getting into the wood there that's the trace amount of sediment left from the second bucket so so far we're doing pretty good I am uh, making a bit of a mess on my deck and in retrospect I would recommend just buying an inexpensive plastic painter's drop cloth, weighing it down with, with heavy objects on, on four ends and having that underneath if you were to try to attempt to do the same thing. That maybe go a little bit slower than me, but uh, I'm not really too worried as we don't, uh, we don't seal the deck or treat the deck or do anything else with it. If a board gets bad, I just pull it out and replace it with another piece of treated wood. So I'm not, really, I'm not really too worried about this soaking into the wood here. At your home, that might be a different thing. Maybe the driveway would be better, but once again, maybe uh, get a plastic drop cloth. Just a little advice. I would have done that before this video had I even thought of it. On to the third and final can. Okay, this third can is brand new. I just bought this thing. I think I paid way too much for it. It is American made. And uh, for fun, you guys can watch me struggle taking this off. Take your thumb and push down on this tab. Oh, look, it comes with a warning. That's great. And one of these California compliant ones. Wonderful. Let's see how well the funnel works with that. Okay. Hopefully this works. It's supposed to be five gallons, so we'll find out here. Go ahead and set the filter on the bucket. And here's our last 
pail of diesel. This one is probably the first one I filled up. This one's the most full. And I spill it again on camera, only on camera. I'm pouring this a lot faster than I poured the first two because I noticed it really didn't seem to make much of a difference. The, uh, the filter membrane there seems to do its job. And I don't expect it to last forever, but uh, it's holding up better than I actually thought based on how flimsy it looked when I first took it out of the box. And you can see there's sediment from the tank and a little bit more dirt and crud from the top of the tank. Now let's see if I can just simply lift this off and it will strain the last of those four gallons. That looks fairly clean. Now let's see how well it pours into this California compliance fuel can. Seems to be taking it all right. That little filter or whatever they have there in the neck, it's not really interfering. Of course, it's not helping, not helping my skill here or lack thereof pouring. All right, we're all done. Got three to four gallons of old diesel in each can. The last bucket just left a little bit of sediment. Simply just take terry cloth and wipe that out. I can actually clean these later with maybe some brake cleaner. That's what I used to clean the hydraulic oil out of these before I, I used them. And I'll have them if I ever need them again. It's always good to have a few extra buckets and lids laying around. So I'll simply put those in the back of the truck, take them to the gas station, add some fresh diesel to them, store them in my shed, and add them to the tank in the truck when it gets low, say down to about three quarters or less, and then pour some fresh diesel in on top of it. And that's usually what I do about every three to six months is I will empty my uh, fuel cans into an almost empty tank and pump some fresh diesel in on top of that and then refill these and then put them back in my shed. And that way I've always got diesel just in case there's ever a problem. And because I had to buy this third can recently in order to do this, now I can store more diesel than I did in the past and increase my preps. Hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully, if you ever have to strain some diesel, you can find one of these 25 micron filters. It worked pretty good for what it is. I'm gonna clean it up and put it back in the box and store it where it won't get crushed in case I ever need it again. Or maybe I'll just uh, put it inside of a bucket. Let's see, will the lid close on it? Eh, the lid doesn't like closing on it, so. Oh yeah, you can see, trying to store it in a bucket, maybe not such the best idea. But I'll go ahead and uh, I'll put it back in this cardboard box and store it in case I ever need it again, after I clean it up though. And I'll include all the information about where to find this on Amazon. You can probably find it uh, other places, maybe at a uh, farm and fleet type store, or maybe even at a truck stop or something like that, who knows. Thanks for watching.